Welcome to Second Recap. Before we start the movie, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and support me with a like and comment. That way the channel will grow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with two masked men chasing a van. After a while, they collide with the SUV, forcing it into a wall. The two masked men get out of the car and force the driver to get out. When they are about to steal a bag from the trunk, another car suddenly arrives. Gunmen get out and a gunfight ensues. The two masked men, Vincent and Seen, are undercover cops. They continue to fight the newly arrived criminals and kill one of them as the police arrives. When the criminals hear police sirens, they decide to get into their cars and drive away. At the same time, Vincent and Seen steal the duffel bag and drive away before the police arrive. In the car, Seen discovers that the duffel bag contains 25 kilograms of coke worth several million dollars. The two officers did not expect a surprise attack by the criminals, and Seen becomes concerned that the criminals have seen Vincent's face. When Vincent returns home, he receives a message from his wife telling him to give their son a ride. We then learn that Vincent is an internal affairs agent who has been investigating a crime ring for two years. The man he works with, Seen, also works with the criminals, but Vincent's main targets are casino owner Stanley Rubino and the gang's leader, Rob Novak. Next, an agent named Jennifer enters the department with a cut on her face. All of her co-workers stare at her puzzled, but she ignores them. She tells a police psychologist about a recent incident in which she tried to dismantle a meth lab but was attacked by a criminal. Many of her colleagues think she is out of her mind and should take a break, but Jennifer is determined to participate in the investigation of the illegal substance ring. At the department, all of the officers, including Vincent, are informed of the previous night's shooting. Vincent manages to convince the chief to turn the case over to him and scene. Subsequently, they arrive at the scene of the crime. Vincent and Jennifer meet for the first time and gather evidence. There is clearly friction between the two, as each wants to take over the case. Later, Vincent goes to the hospital to give his son Thomas a ride to sports practice. Vincent learns that his ex-wife, Dina, is engaged to another man. Dina and Thomas are both aware Vincent has kept to himself since he took over the case but they are never made aware of the details of the case. He is Dina some stolen flowers and is furious when he finds out that she wants to get married. However, she has no intention of getting back together with him. Vincent picks up his son and they get into the car. On the way, he tries to explain to his son why he has been absent, but suddenly the two are ambushed on the parkway. Two men attack them, stab Vincent in the abdomen and kidnap Thomas. Vincent almost immediately receives a phone call from Rubino. He knows that Vincent has stolen the coke and asks him to bring it to the Luxus Casino, which he owns, within three hours or face retaliation from Novak and his family. Meanwhile, Jennifer decides to seek information about Vincent's life and past. At that moment, Vincent enters a public restroom and begins bandaging his wounds. Scene enters shortly and Vincent explodes at him and orders him to bring the bag of stuff or else his son will be killed. Here, he realizes they stole the bag from the wrong criminal and suspects that Scene is in on it. However, Scene swears it was a mistake and goes to get the bag immediately. Elsewhere, Novak tortures his cousin, a DEA informant. He is also one of the men Vincent and Scene shot while stealing the bag. Novak hangs the man upside down and shoots him with pellets before ordering his henchman to cut out his cousin's tongue. Meanwhile, Thomas is also locked inside a room, awaiting Novak's decision. In the evening, Vincent travels with the bag to Rubino's casino. On the way, Dina calls him to ask where her son is. Vincent says they had a fight and he ran away, but now she is looking for him. Next, Vincent enters the casino, hides half the stuff in a garbage bag, and hangs it from the ceiling above a stall in the men's room. He then heads upstairs to negotiate Rubino for Thomas's return. At the same time, Jennifer, who suspects that Vincent is double-crossing her, arrives at the casino to investigate him. When Jennifer sees Vincent walking away with the bag, she goes into the bathroom to see what it is. She starts looking for evidence inside the restroom. When the security guard discovers that she is an agent, he tells her Vincent was also wandering around there. She starts rummaging through the stalls and eventually finds the bag of stuff. Soon, she calls her co-worker and tells him that she was right. Vincent is working with criminals. Meanwhile, Vincent is negotiating the release of his son in exchange for the rest of the stuff. He reveals that he has hidden the other half and promises to deliver it in 10 minutes if he will let his son go. Rubino tells him that he is in trouble, as the stuff belongs to Novak, a crazed criminal, 
far more ruthless than he is. However, he accepts Vincent's offer and gives him 10 minutes to bring him the rest of the stuff. Meanwhile, Jennifer takes the stuff to the women's locker room at the spa. When Vincent discovers that the bag is missing, he begins to worry and tries to find it. Novak arrives at the casino and begins to pressure Rubino to get the stuff, who asks him to wait another 10 minutes and offers him a drink. A little later, Novak begins to threaten Rubino and his father, who runs an even larger criminal organization, will intervene. Security guards scan the surveillance cameras but cannot find Vincent, who crawls through ventilation pipes and arrives at a laundry room. After he puts on a fancy costume, he enters a storage room where he starts putting sugar inside the bags to make them look like the stuff. He goes to the bar and tells them to bring a bottle of wine to Rubino's office. He then hands over the bag with sugar and reveals that he is a police officer. However, he also lies and says the officers have arrived here to catch them. So he urges them to escape through the hidden exit. Soon, the waiter brings wine and the criminals think it is the police. Novak thanks Vincent for the information and leaves. Rubino releases Thomas and orders Vincent to leave the casino. Later, Novak checks the contents of the bag and discovers that it is sugar. So he orders all his men to return to the casino. Meanwhile, Thomas joins his father and they begin to leave the casino. Novak finds Rubino and tells him that he was given sugar, not the real stuff. Rubino says he has Vincent's son and promises to bring him the stuff. He orders his henchmen to find Thomas and bring him to him. Vincent and Thomas go into hiding and his stat wound begins to bleed. He reveals to his son he is involved in a big drug ring. Suddenly, Rubino's thug pounces on the two and starts fighting him in a kitchen. Thomas tries to help his father by intervening, and the henchman is subdued by Vincent, who throws him through a window into an office. Elsewhere, Novak orders his henchman to inform the agents that he guarantees a prize for whoever brings Seen and Vincent to him. Vincent and Thomas attempt to escape through the club, but the boy is caught by the henchman on the dance floor. Novak talks to Rubino and threatens to kill him if he does not bring back the stuff. Meanwhile, Jennifer and her co-worker are searching the casino for Vincent, but to no avail. Thus, the man advises them to return to the department and begin the investigation tomorrow. Vincent disguises himself as a hotel employee to go unnoticed. However, he runs into Jennifer, who recognizes him and pursues him. After a long chase, the two fight in one of the rooms. He manages to chain her to the bed and explains his involvement in the case and admits that he has been an undercover agent for two years. He has had to keep this information from his family, and now his son has been kidnapped. In the process, Rubino and the henchman beat Thomas, but leave the door open after leaving. Thus, Thomas manages to escape the room and steal Rubino's phone. Jennifer reveals where she hid the stuff and Vincent goes to the locker area. In the process, she breaks free and informs her partner Dennison about Vincent's location. Vincent looks for the bag, but it is gone. Dennison discovers it and gets into a fight with him. After a long fight, Vincent knocks him out of the hot tub, but pulls him out before he drowns. Elsewhere, Thomas uses the phone and calls Vincent to inform him of his location. Soon, Cena arrives at the casino after Vincent asks him to bring him a police uniform. At the same time, the henchman arrives and he and Cena simultaneously shoot each other. Dina also realizes that something is wrong, so she leaves the hospital and heads to the casino. When Vincent checks Rubino's phone, he notices a message from Dennison. He is working with Novak and has informed his superiors that the narcotics are missing and that Vincent may be able to locate them. Dennison and Jennifer find Seen's body. As she calls for backup, the man chokes Seen to death as he knows that Dennison is a cop who also works with criminals. Dennison tells Jennifer that he is going to meet with backup. He meets with Novak in the elevator. We discover that he protects Novak's business by paying off other agents. Novak knows the police are coming and threatens Dennison, saying he is not doing what he is paid to do. However, Dennison says that in the department, he has a list with Novak's Tate and his family, and if he kills him, their business in Vegas will be shattered. Next, Vincent creates chaos in the nightclub, fighting against Rubino's henchmen. He breaks champagne bottles and kills the thugs before fleeing with Thomas. They get into an exhibition supercar and drive away as Novak shoots at them. Rubino attempts to flee, but is stopped by Jennifer Dennison and a group of other officers. Vincent and Thomas make their way to the parking lot, but are chased by Novak's henchmen. Vincent gets out of the car and orders his son to drive away while he takes care of the henchmen. Next, Novak starts spraying tear gas canisters all over the garage. 
When a henchman approaches Thomas, Vincent arrives and starts fighting him. Because of his injuries, he collapses on the ground. When another goon arrives to shoot him, Thomas gets into an SUV and hits him. Soon, a thug is about to shoot Vincent and Thomas, but Dean arrives and kills him with a gun she picked. Then, Novak approaches and starts firing an automatic rifle. Vincent comes out and tries to bargain with him, but he shoots Vincent in the chest, who collapses to the ground, but survives and fatally shoots Novak. On their way to the hospital, Vincent calls Jennifer and alerts her of Dennison's corruption. At this point, she tries to shoot Dennison now that she knows the truth, but he grabs a gun and shoots her first. He then kills Rubino and the driver of the car, causing it to flip and crash. Moments later, other officers arrive. Dennison claims Rubino has gone mad and killed Jennifer, but the woman gets out of the car and orders the officers to arrest Dennison. Jennifer and Vincent are both transported to the hospital. Dean and Thomas are sitting by Vincent's bed when he wakes up. Jennifer enters Vincent's room, and he compliments her on her police work. Next, the CSI team is cleaning out the garage, where Novak and his henchmen were found murdered. Novak's phone rings, and the caller is his father. A DEA agent on their payroll answers the phone and informs Novak's father that there is a problem, telling him about his son's death. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.